I'm a big fan of surprises, but when it comes to rising health insurance premiums, nobody likes surprises that they have to pay more money the following year for the health insurance plan you bought this year. And so in this video, we're gonna talk about why health insurance premiums increase. So many of my clients ask me, why do my health insurance premiums go up every single year? So there's five reasons, but there's many reasons, but there's five that I'm gonna share with you today on why health insurance premiums increase year after year. So number one, with marketplace plans on the Affordable Care Act marketplace, those plans have to take everybody, even with pre-existing conditions. They're not allowed to ask any medical questions and any kind of qualifying questions up front before enrolling a person into the plan. So the insurance companies, by, by having that requirement, you know, it's really great for people that are sick and have pre-existing conditions to be able to get insured, but it's not so great for the insurance companies because they cannot assess their risk before insuring someone onto the policy. So they're basically allowing somebody on and they're pooling them in with a bunch of other people so it, it's really difficult for them to be able to predict what the usage is gonna be out of that whole pool of people when they can't ask any medical questions up front so number two is really since the years since the affordable Affordable Care Act has been enacted more and more insurance companies have pulled out of the marketplace altogether because what they're doing is they're saying you know what, we're not in the business of losing money. We're an insurance company. We're in the business of making money. And so this model here with the Affordable Care Act and having to take everybody with pre-existing conditions and not being able to assess our risk, we don't like it. So what we're gonna do is pull out and we're gonna choose the people and the groups that we wanna focus on and pr provide plans for them. So a lot of those big insurance companies have focused on now bigger group plans um, and like employer coverage and things like that. So what does this do to the people like the consumers buying individual health insurance. It takes power away from the consumer because they have less choices. And so this means that you're stuck paying more money if you're on the marketplace. Number three, there's a really increasing, like a, like a trajectory and what you see as a pattern of healthcare costs going up and up and up. And there's a lack of price transparency, meaning that you don't get the, what the prices of things actually cost especially if you have to go to an ER, you don't get the prices up front. They don't give you a choice often. So uh, us as the consumer, we can really take our power back by asking, what is the cost of this? I always teach my clients to ask, what's the self-pay cost? What is the cash price for this if I didn't have insurance? Because they should be able to tell you that. And that way you can kind of assess, is this something that I wanna do? Um, or is this something that maybe I don't need to do or something that I could do at a different, less expensive you know, kind of a center? Number four, because of the way the system has been set up and people have been trained over the years, there's just a lot of opportunity for fraud and for abuse. And so, you know, unfortunately, the insurance companies, if there's a, they can't ask, you know, they can't assess their risk to be able to take someone on the plan and they offer a max out of pocket, like every Affordable Care Act marketplace plan has to offer. Right, so let's say that max out of pocket is $8,000. Then somebody who needs treatment in a year and they know they need the treatment, in upwards of $50,000, the most they're gonna pay is $8,000. Even if they expected that they were gonna need those things and it wasn't like they were just doing it for, you know, just in case of the unexpected, which is really the purpose of insurance. So a lot of people will abuse of this. And also, um, like some people are on very expensive medication. I've, I've run into some people that tell me that their medication that they get every year or every, uh, every month costs them upwards of $2,000 a month. So imagine that, right? So someone's paying, let's just say they're paying $400 a month for the most expensive plan, which is actually probably more than that, um, and their max out of pocket is $8,000 in a year, they're going to meet that max out of pocket. And in, in fact, the insurance company is gonna lose a lot of money on that particular person because they're gonna receive a lot less in premium than they're gonna have to pay out. And most likely that person will keep renewing. And you know, so over time, the insurance companies have to keep adjusting their rates to kind of make up for all this abuse. And number five, one of the main premises of the Affordable Care Act 
at the beginning was that there'd be healthy people that would, and there were young and healthy people in the marketplace, they'd barely ever use their plans. And at the beginning, there was this tax penalty that they would be subject to if they didn't have a plan through the marketplace. Well, lo and behold, over time, a lot of the healthy people just drop out of the marketplace altogether. And now there are all kinds of alternative plans like underwritten private coverage and short-term plans or employer-based plans. And so these young, healthy people that are the ones that really will keep the prices in the marketplace affordable, they drop out. And so when they drop out, again, prices go up for everybody. So what are the solutions? What can we do as consumers to avoid this constant increase in premiums to affect your family? One of the ways that you can do this is to apply for underwritten private coverage. Those plans, although the increases do happen, they're, they tend to go up a lot less because you're insured, you're grouped in with a group of people that all have the same goals. You wanna keep your monthly premium down, you don't want high deductibles, you want access to PPO, um, networks that give you access to the doctors and hospitals that you want, that you can go to specialists directly without a referral, but you're also willing to forego some of the things that you can pay yourself for, such as pregnancy, drug and alcohol rehab, mental health. You're okay with not having that covered by your plan. You're okay with paying a little bit out of pocket here and there because you have the same goals as everybody else. That's one of the ways that over time you can save thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars having one of those plans. So if you want more information on how this may apply to you or if you'd qualify for an underwritten plan or you just need help with your marketplace plan or your problem, as I call it, I like to fix problems, um, reach out to me at alexandracontos.com. And if you found this video helpful, please share it with friends and like and, and, and comment.